Hey everybody, Pumpkin here. So I haven't put up a lot of decks recently uh, and that's because I've kind of been searching for like a good Squirtle deck and Faction Challenge is here and as the Squirtle Ambassador I feel like I should probably be playing some Squirtle on stream. So uh, originally this deck, uh, Trap deck, right, with cards like Pitfall, Yorvith, and uh, Crushing Serpent, Originally, this deck was with Bruver, and I ran Shiru because Shiru is just the best Squirtle gold card. Why would you not play it? If you play Shiru, you have to play Bruver because Call of the Forest and Ithlan are too clunky on Shiru. So, yeah, that was my mindset. But because you have to play three different leaders for the faction challenge, I decided to take that deck and throw it on Ethne and see what happens. I mean, how, how bad can it be? Uh, it turns out it's actually better, which was very surprising. Um... It turns out Shiru's not good in a trap deck. Uh, <laughs> Shiru's still an insanely broken card, uh, and it kind of has to be because Squirtle doesn't really have any other finishers. But with that said, it's not good in this deck. Um, what I found out when I was playing a trap deck with like Pitfall, Yorvith as like finishers, I wouldn't get great Shiru value. So if you've ever played Bruver and Shiru together, you're looking for like three, four, five, six fours at some point in the round three, uh, and you completely blow them out. You play like a 30 point Shiru or something. It's great. Um, the problem with that game plan with this kind of deck is it just doesn't work because you're, you're playing cards like Pitfall Trap, which completely denies a unit. So you're completely losing a, a potential Shiru unit there. Um, and you're playing Crushing Trap, so any fours that they're playing are getting damaged down to two. So basically, you're really hurting your potential Shiro value whenever you play uh, Traps. At one point, I thought, well, I'll just play like Shiro in round one or round two to like take the round, but it just wasn't worth it. Sometimes I wouldn't draw Shiro until round three, and it's just it felt really bad. A lot of the times, I would have to just like Shiro on like one four maybe even two fours and that just that doesn't feel good shiroing on two fours is eight points plus the two point shiro body you're getting 10 value eh, i mean it's okay uh i've played shiro for two points before because there's just nothing to shiro so i i i cut shiro and i love it it's great we are able to play scorch now and scorch is phenomenal with ethne ethne probably should only be played with cards like scorch uh, and potentially like regis because you can uh, line up that row so without any further ado let's hop right into the deck so ethne is our leader allows you to get four pings uh, other than the fact that we don't run shiru the only other downside is you can't move units with your leader so you're going to be losing a little bit of crushing value crushing trap value but for the most part i haven't really noticed this so it's not that big of a deal uh finding those large scorches for me has been much more important uh my opponent i a nilf card game comes to mind my opponent played like a sire then he played Sarret, and then he slave infantry like a two drop so he had a six and three fives i just pinged one of the sixes and quad scorch on the fives and that was game over uh yeah the only thing you have to be careful of is you do run the immune dragon, so don't just go into round three and slap the dragon on the board because <laughs> you might not find a scorch unless you're playing against like big monsters or something. So just just keep that in mind. You, you're going to probably hold on to your immune dragon a little later. So scorch, very strong card. Uh, I generally don't try to get too greedy with this card. Um, if I'm in round one, I don't mind playing the Scorch, unless of course it's big monsters. If it's big monsters, I'd like to hold the Scorch for round three. But like, I'll queue into SK and they'll play like a Burna, it'll roll in Morkvarg, and then they'll play, uh, they'll have a Wild Boar of the Sea on the board from the previous turn and they'll have a four. I'll ping the two cards down and then go off on fours because 12 points is, yeah, I mean, we're not getting 14 value out of it, but it's okay. It's good enough. Um... I've found that getting greedy on Scorch usually causes me to lose value. So I, I would play Scorch when you need to. Don't don't get too greedy. Erden, phenomenal card in this meta. Unicorn is in every deck. Big Monsters is popular. Unicorn's popular. Dagger Herald's popular. Play this card. Um, this is probably a must-have in almost every deck right now uh, until the potential nerf to Unicorn and Chironex in the upcoming patch. Uh, and some decks are even playing uh, Commander's Horn because, yeah, I don't know. It, it's it's a good card. It's it's a nice finisher. 15 points is insane if you can fill up the row. So Erden, phenomenal card. 
Uh, Dragon, I've talked about this card in the past. I love this card. It's one of my favorite Skoyatel cards. A giant immune body. Very, very, very good. We don't have Unicorn in this deck to boost up simply because um, if we're boosting, it means our Scorch is <laughs> never finding value. Um, and I wanted to try a deck without Unicorn and Chironax, and I haven't really been missing it. So generally, Uni Cairo. It's not even a round one card because the odds of you drawing both of them in your opening hand is not very high. So it's usually kind of like a finisher, but the finishers in this deck are fine, uh, as we'll get to in a bit. Mahakam Horn, um, when your opponent passes, boost adjacent units by four. I love this card. It's great. It's like old Teruvial and old Gwent. Um, I usually say this for round three. Sometimes I play it in round one. I'll like bait people around. It's, it's really fun. So... One of the other reasons why Shiru is really bad in this deck is because ordering in this deck is more important than like any other deck. Um, your, your sequencing of cards can actually determine whether or not you win or lose the game. Uh, and that's where like time to get that Shiru in it feels really awkward sometimes because like your last three plays are sometimes always the same. Uh, it could be like Crushing Trap, Pitfall, and then you are with Pitfall, or, or something along those lines. Or uh, Pitfall, you are with Pitfall, and then Erden to reset the row. So, yeah. Uh, Mahakam Horn's a nice proactive play in round three. It works well with Elven Scout. We'll get into that a little later. Uh, you put it. I usually put this in the back row. I play my dragon far left, and then I play my horns one unit to, or right next to the dragon, just because the dragon's never dying because it's immune. And then I put all my other units to the right of Horn. Because if they kill the units, well, there's more units to the right. So, yeah. Good card. I like it. It sucks when your opponent uses artifact removal on it. But mm, there's not much artifact removal going on right now. Um, yeah. And most of the times, if they do have it, they play it in round one on my Crushing Trap. Malayan, solid card. Uh, nice, <laughs> nice engine removal. Uh, you can use it to line up Scorch. It's a good card overall. Roach. So one of the issues with Scoia'tael is round one. Normally to combat this, you play Vanguards in a full elf deck and you can play Vanguards for anywhere between like eight and 10 value in round one. Uh, but this isn't an elf deck, so we can't run Vanguards. So we run Roach for the extra points and the thinning is helpful because this is a deck that runs multiple cards and you do want these cards together. The main two cards are Pitfall Trap and Yorvith. Yorvith, return an allied trap to your hand and play a trap. Um, this card can suck, and it can be completely insane. Uh, I've had people telling me that this deck is completely degenerate because my opponent will be playing Woodland. They'll save their two best cards for the very end, and their leader. I'll play Pitfall. It'll kill their unit, and then they all put it back down with Yorvith, and they lose because they can't use the plus eight on Woodland. So against bad players, these two cards are insane because... They always just save their combo for the end. Same thing with like Dagger to Harrow. Um, the problem is more and more people are starting to... Well, <laughs> I keep queuing into the same people so they kind of know the deck. Um, so they'll try to mix things up. They'll play like their Dagger Herald early or they'll play their like Woodland like two turns into the round. People do weird stuff. So yeah, th these types of cards suck when you're streaming because if they do snipe you, uh, your chances of winning dramatically go down but I was still winning like 65% of my games with this deck on stream. So if I can do it on stream, you can definitely do it off stream because uh, that small factor, well, isn't a factor. So <clears throat> very strong cards. Uh, one fun combo is in round three, uh, Crushing Trap, you want to play as your third to last card, right? When you have two other cards in hand plus the Crushing. So sometimes I will play Pitfall when I have four cards in hand. So I'll play the Pitfall, uh, they'll play a card, it'll flip over, kill the unit, and then I will Yorvith the Pitfall back into my hand and then play Crushing Trap, uh, because you can switch it with Yorvith. Generally, your opponent then plays a garbage card, because they want the Pitfall to kill the garbage card, but you played Crushing, and then you lead with the Pitfall, and the Pitfall usually gets more value. So this is a fun little combo that you can run. Um, sometimes in round two, if I'm getting bled, this deck can struggle if getting bled, but... Uh, I'll be playing the round and I'll play Pitfall. Their unit will get sacked. I'll play Yorvith, pick up Pitfall, and then instantly play Pitfall again. I won't play Pitfall. I'll just play Mahakam Horn. Um, and yeah, they don't expect it. It's great. I love it. Um, they'll play some garbage card and Pitfall didn't go off. And then I'll pass. Horn will go off. Whatever. Uh, 
there's a lot of fun mind games you can run with this kind of deck with the traps and that's that's one of the reasons why i really really love this deck because the mind games are phenomenal um, i've played against some higher level players and it'll be round one and i will snap a serpent trap on the board and then i'll pass and i'll be three or four points behind but the beauty is the better players know that um, Hockam Horn is a card. So they'll, they'll play so that they're nine points ahead of me and then pass. And I just threw away some garbage serpent traps. So there's a lot of fun mind games you can play with your opponent. Uh, some of them are a little ballsier than other, but I, sometimes you got to take that risk. Uh, Siren, very strong card. Helps with crushing trap. Good luck. Solid card all around. Witchers, um, thinning is very important. This deck needs uh, around one point. Witchers with Roach allows you to get those points. Serpent Trap. So having more ambush isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's good to mess around or play with your opponent's head. The main reason I'm playing this card right now is one Shoop M here is the best Nilf card list. Uh, and it's going to be coming pretty popular with the Faction Challenge. Serpent Trap just completely denies Shoop. So against Shoop, I'll play this and I'll smack it immediately in round three. Because it just denies Shoop. Um... Also, Blue Dream is pretty popular right now, so Serpent Trap denies that. Um, BDM is popular in SK with Yetta. Nagflar and, like, 10% ADC and like, monster decks. So, for the most part, the card gets good value. Um, do keep in mind, if you're playing against a heavier control deck, like a crack SK deck, and you have this card in round 3, and you're wondering whether or not you should hold it and, like, mulligan it away because, well, which would you rather, a Serpent Trap, which might get value, or I don't know. An archer for five points. The answer is keep the serpent trap, um, because against like a crack SK deck, your units are going to get hit and they're going to die. So, yeah, there's maybe a ten to twenty percent chance that the serpent trap goes off, but there's a hundred percent chance that that archer is going to die. So, and it's a proactive play. So, just keep the serpent trap. Granted, if it's a short round, if it's like a three card round, you're not going to want the serpent trap. But if, if it's like an eight plus card round, I keep the serpent trap 100% of the time because every now and then they play BDM or Scorch and this just blows them out. Uh, and once again, Blue Dream is very popular. Crushing Trap. This is like a delayed last rate after three turns on an enemy uh, on turn end. Damage all units on the row with the most units by two. Um, very strong card. So this is the other card that lets you win round one. The two most important cards to help you win round one are going to be your Witchers with Roach and Crushing Trap. Crushing Trap is one of those cards you want to draw in round one. So in terms of mulligans for this deck, you want to have at least one Witcher and ideally a Crushing Trap. Uh, that, that's a perfect hand. Those, those two cards. Um, so the beauty of Crushing Trap is when you play it on turn six, or when you have six cards left in your hand, uh, including the Crushing Trap, when you play it, Two turns later, you can pass, and when you pass, it'll flip over and damage your opponent's uh, side of the board. So this allows you to win on even pretty often. Um, just a heads up, when you do play this with six cards in hand, and then you play your fifth card, and then your fourth card, uh, or when you play your fifth card, emote, because for some reason, when you play traps and you emote, it messes with your opponent's head, and like 80% of the time they pass, and then you pass, and then you win the round on even. So... Phenomenal card. Works well with Dragoon and Siren. Um, for round three, also you want to, or I guess not also, you want to play this when you have three cards left in your hand, just so that when you do pass, uh, it goes off at the end of the game. Unless you didn't draw Pitfall Trap. If you did not draw Pitfall Trap and you have Yorvith in your hand, 90% of the time you're going to be playing Yorvith on Crushing Trap, so you're going to want to play Crushing Trap on turn six. You're gonna play it on turn six. You're gonna play a turn on, or play a card on five and four, uh, and then it's gonna flip. And on turn three, you're gonna you pick it up and play it back down again. So do keep that in mind. If you did not draw Pitfall Trap, you're gonna be wanting to play Crushing Trap on turn six and on turn three with your Um If you have two Crushing Traps in round three, you're gonna want to, you're gonna to want to play Crushing Trap on turn four or when you have four cards left and three cards left. So timing is very very important. If you miss time something, it could lose you the game. So. Just, just be careful of that. Sappers, uh, I like this card. You, you can honestly swap it out if you'd like for whatever. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you could play Bowman if you want. I like the card because every now and then you queue into an SK deck and having that artifact removal just kind of wins you the game. <laughs> uh, and you don't really mind playing a 4 for 5. 
uh, and it helps in the mirror match. If people start playing this deck, the sappers are going to be very, 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 very good cards. So I keep them in. Archers are nice. Uh, they're nice removal. They're just solid cards. They kill, um, or they can help you kill swordmasters with ethne. They can help you line up uh, scorches. They can kill drowners. They can kill neckers. Good card. Drowner, or sorry, dragoon. Uh, helps you move for a crushing trap. Uh, I like to have a Dragoon in round one if possible. When I do play that Crushing Trap with six cards in hand, I will very often play a Dragoon then turn right after just to push a unit up to increase the Crushing Trap value. Yeah, good card. Swordmaster, very strong card. It's a nice engine. It dies very frequently, but when it doesn't, it's phenomenal. Elven Scout, so this is not a very common card. You don't see this card in literally anything. No one plays this card. It's good. I really like this card, um, obviously in a trap deck, but I, I've had this card get up to like nine value in a round. Um, what's fun about this is it's like invisible points. So uh, I had a game today where uh, on with six cards left in hand, I play Crushing Trap. Uh, and then the turn after I played Elven Scout. My opponent didn't kill it because we were halfway through the round and he had no more removal. And then I played Mahakam Horn. Um, and like my opponent plays some random card and I pass because that's a lot of points. Mahakam Horn is eight plus the two on Elven Scout, which brings it to 10. And he had, well, I think it was five units. So Crushing Trap was flipping for 10 plus the two on Elven Scout. That was 22 points that wasn't really on the board that my opponent couldn't see. Um, this deck could be really, really explosive, uh, with Crushing Trap, Mahakam Horn and Elven Scout. So... Sometimes the numbers on the right, I mean, I've had games where my chat tells me that I'm 30 points behind, but the reality is I'm not really 30 points behind because I have like 20 points and traps on the board and they just can't really see. So yeah, this is a pretty underrated card. It's good. I, I would never suggest to like play this immediately on turn one. It'll die. Uh, you want to play this after you've played a crushing trap. Um, yeah, preferably the turn before it goes off um, or two turns doesn't really matter uh very strong card i love this card so yeah uh, a bit of a longer video um i wanted to put this in just for people who maybe didn't play a trap deck yet uh if you skip this part that's fine you can just go right into the gameplay uh in terms of playing the round out uh just like every other deck you want to try to win round one uh you don't have to um just remember crushing trap with six cards left in hand that's probably the yeah just keep that in mind always um you can play crushing trap with five cards in hand only if you one coin flip uh because then you don't mind going down to three cards uh so if you lost coin flip playing crushing on six is very 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 important unless you're like 40 points behind there are some games where i do not play crushing trap on turn six because my opponent is like 30 plus points ahead of me and a crushing trap hitting three units is not going to help that so uh you, you do have to do some math with this deck um yeah don't be afraid to use ethne in round one don't be afraid to use scorch in round one really do whatever you need to do to win round one uh, I would not play Dragon in round one. I try not to play Urden in round one against uh, like Dagger or um, big monster decks. Try not to play Yorvith or Pitfall Trap in round one. This is basically your win con right here. These two cards and Dragon. Uh, Horn, you can play in round one if it's against um, either, not Mirror, eh, Mirror Match doesn't matter. Uh, if it's, uh, okay, if it's an identical Mirror Match with Ethne, it does matter. You, you wanna save that Horn. But if it's against like a Bruver deck, you, you can play the Horn in round one. So the matchups where you need to win round one are Big Monsters and Dagger Herald because you need that reset on Erden. So against those matchups, winning round one is super, super important. So playing the Horn is fine. Um, otherwise, you try to hold on to it for round three. You, you don't need last say with this deck against any of those other decks other than those two uh, primary decks. Uh, try to save Serpent Trap for round three against Shoop. Um, if I won coin flip, a lot of times I'll just dump Serpent Trap in round one against well, non-shoop decks because, um, it might not get value and every now and then it hits like a nag flyer and it's pretty good. So yeah, this is also going to be one of those decks where you're going to have to play it a few times to get the hang of it. It's not like my last video with the Bruver deck where it's, it's pretty straightforward, remove their stuff, play dragon, boost it up with the unicorn at the end. 
Uh, this is more of a deck where you have to play mind games and timing is really, really important. And your sequencing of like your last three to four cards is going to make or break the games. And the only way to get better, I mean, I could go on and on and try to explain to you how to do it better. Uh, even I can't do it perfectly because it depends on the scenarios. It depends on if your opponent knows your hand or not. There's just so many different factors involved. So my best advice to you would be just play it, practice. Um, so yeah. Really fun deck. I'm going to show you some games. I hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys on the next video. May your sword and arm be one. Onward, fry head! Excuse me. I'm gonna do this just because if he has artifact removal, I want him to use it in this round, not next round, or round three rather. Can you put an ambassador sign in the gnome hand? How do I do that? The problem is his hand is like this, not like that. Oh, I know. There you go. Swords I smile at. Weapons Nailed it. Scorn. Oh wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, hold on. There we go. Is it better with his legs over or under? What do you guys think? Let us sing the song of steel. Under over under. Oh, you got the smiley face on the gnome's face. Under, 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 okay. See if you guys can get a, uh, a pumpkin hmm on the gnome's face. Good luck. Oh, it's close. Oh, do you guys think you can get a gnome face on the gnome? Oh, 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 oh! Oh, we did it. It got to it. We did it, boys. Well done. Good job. If he passes, we lose, but no one would pass on five cards. Why is it upside down so that he can hold, hold it? Held it? Held it? Hold it. This is Elven Land, Dwan. Upon which your kind dies. Come for enough. If 
from where is this music? YouTube. There you go. Humanity has peaked. Ruined? Is it ruined now? The Gnome Ambassador, yeah. I'd say it's perfect. I mean, this edge's pretty good other than the fact that there's no pitfall. So let's go look for pitfall, I guess. Oh, that's a good card. Shit. Imagine drawing good card. That's weird. I don't think I need Skorka. I mean, I should keep Skorka. Nah, this hand's just good. Like, I want to look for that pit, but I don't know. I'll drop Yorvik if I don't draw Pitfall next turn. Alright, so we're looking for pit. That's it. It's our best card. Yeah? Alright, cool. I mean, that is every card I want. Thanks. What are the odds he's... If, if he's playing another artifact deck, we should look for a sapper, but no one plays artifacts. Unicorn, go. Click it. Unicorn. Big. Quick no, 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 no. Unicorn. This is probably getting removed. Yeah, the dragon play is gutsy, but they generally play artif or they generally play uni on the dragon, which means it walks into Squirka. Um, worst case scenario, I have to ethne ping a dragon down one point. How about scaling the gnome up so he can hold the whole sign? Yeah, but then the gnome's gonna be massive. Wait, you don't remove the artifact? That's an interesting play. Yes, one. I don't know if I agree with that. Perfect. <laughs> He's huge. Three points is greater than eight points. Oh yeah, one hundred percent of the time. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm.
king faces difficult choices. He'll bring it up to eight. He needs to be very mindful where he plays it. He played it correctly. If he plays it on the top row, um, it doesn't work. Right. Well, it, it works. It's just I get more earned value. So well done. I'm proud of you. This is going off this turn, which makes us really awkward. Like, I want a Siren, but we lose value on Erden. So there is actually a scenario where I Yorvith, pit, uh, I Yorvith this next turn instead of the pitfall. If I think he's saving garbage for the end of the game. It depends on what he plays here. So the correct play from him is to play the Cairo. Okay, so he played the Cairo. Because of that, I'm going to pick this up because this is going to be worth more points most likely. Enough of this farce. Bedry and lay. I'm like 90% of this is correct. Uh, share the link. Sure. Okay, he got you. You're up so many points. Um, I mean, we have three. This is worth eight. So we're up 11, we're, we're, we're tied right now, plus the crushing. So yeah, we're up a few points. Um, he would basically have to play, his best possible card would be, oh, that's actually pretty good. I mean, we don't have a choice. We're, we're always making this play 100% of the time. It's really good. Um, so that crushing was worth 6, 12. So if we had played pit instead of the crushing, uh, we, we, we would have lost two points because it was 12 instead of 10. Um, I mean, we win either way, but yeah. So the crushing play was correct. Scoyatel can only win against Scoyatel. Yeah, because Scoyatel sucks. <laughs> Think about it. If Scoyatel plays against Scoyatel, Scoyatel is winning 100% of the time. Unless they tie. This is Ambassador, by the way. I mean, yeah, I know, it sucks. Uh, the thing is, like, I could lie and say Squayatel is the best faction ever, no but negotiation. it doesn't help anybody. Right? Because then somebody, like, if somebody's new to the game and listens to what, like, listens to that comment, they're going to click on Squayatel and then they're not going to win any games. And then they're gonna come back to me and say, 
Hey, Pumpkin, that, uh, you know that faction you told me to play? Yeah, well, uh, it sucks. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I think it's better just to be brutally honest. The mother goddess, she giveth and taketh away. What are the odds he has two spear maidens in hand? Let us sing the song of Steve. I'll play around it, I guess. He needs to have Cairo Uni, both. <laughs> Mr. Ambassador, why should I visit your faction? So you can know what a bad faction looks like. Yeah, you have the most viewers. I mean, sure, but I could be playing anything. It has nothing to do with the faction that I'm playing. So the question is, do I play around resets? And I think the answer is yes. We're losing one point on crushing, but I think it's worth it. Taste of your own medicine. Oh, it's my haircut. So trio in every deck right now. Yep, for the most part, trios are really good because it. Most decks have some kind of like really large finisher. Um, Squiatel, it's like traps uh, and the dragon. Um, SK is Herald, Nilfgaard is Shoop, uh, NR is like Southkirk and Blaze, Monsters, Ghouls. Monsters is like the only faction that doesn't necessarily have to run it, because they have enough large finishers that they don't really need them. Dude, if he has artifact removal, we're gonna be so sad. What? With great swords, yeah, maybe. Still, I wouldn't play rain in a great sword deck. I don't know. Maybe he knows something I don't know. So he plays a great sword and he gets five points, but it's not enough. So great swords doesn't do it here. All right, play another. So we win, right? Cause we're a card, or we're two cards up, or we're one card up by round three. New meta, rain boys. Why did he wait so long? It takes rain four turns, right? Jeez. No one insults Gimpy going. Your worst card is Gimpy? I would have played a Grace Sword there. Okay. This hand's solid. Other than the lack of pit. I mean, like, I should not be mulliganing this card away, because this is the card I'm going to be playing if he dry pass, or if he dry passes. 
We save this for Grace Sword. This card's good. Good card, good card, good card, good card, good card. I mean, we just sit on this hand. I love Pitfall, but shit, this hand is good. Because I need the card to play after he passes. Do you think SK has too much discard thinning effects and is therefore too consistent? I don't think they have too much. I know they have too much. They can thin to zero every single game. No other deck can do that. Unless you're playing like crazy shit like Last Wish or like Marching Orders ABC or like Kira. Basically bad cards. The problem is thinning in the rest of the game is super expensive. And then SK has thinning that's dirt cheap. No pit. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't need pit. Question mark. He definitely play, plays artifacts. There's no doubt about that. I can't decide. Nilfgaard has a chance to thin to zero. Yeah, they can thin to zero. They just have to play like Prince and... Yeah, Nilfgaard can thin to zero, for sure. Uh, but they have to play like Prince, Blue Dream, uh, like Joachim and play like Joachim. They, they can do it, it's just harder. Or Calvi, sure. But the point is, the thinning is not super duper cheap. Is that my Skorka? for 14. Well, no, I would ethnate ping these two, so it'd be, it would be 12. Thing is, the values... Not, I, I, th okay, the biggest issue is I have nothing to play here. So, the answer is yes. The biggest problem is I quite literally have nothing to play, and we're never playing Siren. 12 for 14 is kind of meh. I mean, it's Scorch. The only time you're getting good value is against monsters. Oh. I mean, that's fine. Wait, I don't give a shit if- No, I should be playing around Arden. Follow me this way. Yes, do I? I don't need these pings for anything else. It's only bad if you play Sig, but if you play Sig, I don't care because we have the tr uh, the anti Sig. Um, so next turn we have to play Crushing Trap because we're going to be playing Crushing Trap twice. Uh, and if you want to play Crushing Trap twice with Yorvith, you have to play it on turn Ariel's six. Right. Mm. Fun, fun, fun. I mean, he knows what all three of these traps are, so it's not very difficult. I will prove my worth. Nice. I mean, if he had an artifact, he would have played it by now. The only reason he doesn't play is if he's watching stream, but like we're getting to the point where like the card gets no value. Jeez. Enough of 
Fos, Fedrai, Enlay! Dude, if he is whale, we're screwed. Wait, no, we're not. We don't give a shit about whale. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I'll help you out, mo. What's the reset worth? Eight, nine, seven, eight, nine. It's always this. And in last words. negotiation how come pitfall doesn't kill blue dream um cdpr coding oh meme and lol i have no idea it doesn't make sense because it kills the shoop card when you when you pitfall trap it kills shoot but it doesn't kill blue dream but they're both pulling off of a special so yeah i have no idea wait i think it kills shoot can somebody confirm that pitfall kills the shoot body and this denies the deploy I'm pretty sure. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I'm pretty sure. It also doesn't kill spies. No, Judge! Yeah, it's weird. I don't know. Coding is a mess. can find out this game. No, timing pitfall on Shoop is so, so, so difficult, if not impossible. You know that pitfall kills a spy if you play it? Does it really? Wait. Wait, are you serious? If I play pitfall and then blue dream his Cantarella or like emissary, or I guess it would be renew. Does it kill it? Cause that would be kind of silly. Why do you emote? I don't see how Roach going front row is bad for him. If anything, it's good for him. I probably should not be reading into emotes. Let us sing the song of steel. You don't play the spy on your side of the board? So it should say whenever you play a unit on your side of the board, but even in that case, Blue Dream should still count. Right? I don't know, it's just Omega lol coding, I guess, at the end of the day. They can hide, but there is no escape. Two pings on Siren and Scorch. Oh, Scorch all the threes.
I mean, it's a Shoop deck. I guess that's not too surprising. It's still a weird card. Please don't have Bomber. Why not scorch all the three point cards? Because I'd be scorching my cards too, and generally speaking, it's bad to scorch your cards. We're signifying that we're passing, but we're up six and it's flipping for 12. So. We're up 18, assuming he doesn't have a bomb heaver. Don't rape your keyboard too much. Hey, 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 hey. I'm just typing, all right? Monka TOS? Okay. I mean, we keep looking. This card is obviously important in this matchup. All right, so we're seeing five cards next turn. We have a little over 50% chance to see this card. I'd like to see this card too, but this one's more important. How did your life change since you're a faction ambassador? Uh, my win rate went down. Um, in all seriousness, my win rate actually went up. Um, this deck has been performing really well. But, you know, you gotta make the joke, right? <laughs> uh, Your jokes got worse. Yeah, because I had to get... I had to cancel the joke. Of course it got worse. If you have to say a joke and then explain it, it's a shitty joke. But I had to. Because otherwise I'd be lying. And which is more important, not lying or telling a joke? Yay. I mean, it's a good hand. We don't need the crushing. Your win rate went up just like blue coin is superior. Uh-huh, yep. Mm-hmm. Chiamos? Because of the gnome, you could change faction and no one would notice. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. I prefer blue coin while playing M here, shoot. If magic dies, this world dies with mm, I don't know if I would agree with that. Okay, I, I could partially agree with it because you don't play any cards that have last say. Because last say doesn't matter, then yeah, sure, I can agree with that. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Any deck that doesn't need last say, blue is 
in theory better. Also, if it's good in a short round, which means if your opponent attempts to bleed you, you can potentially go up a card and just auto win round three. So, yeah, I, I actually, Shoop on blue is okay. The only problem is Shoop round one doesn't have a lot of points. Their, their, their round one is pretty pathetic. Why did you pick Ethne as leader for trap deck? And why are you not no, playing Yorvith's Gambit? Yorvith's Gambit is a bad card. It's too expensive. One. Two. Uh, we're playing Ethne because Bruver is definitely superior because you can play Shiru. But I wanted to see if we could do Ethne. Because as the faction ambassador... Uh, we should be playing every faction, so. Or, ev not every faction. <laughs> every leader. Tips to have hair like yours? Don't cut your hair. You're welcome. To them to a man. We play Ethne because Bruver is superior, correct? Yes. I mean, the way you get your hair like this is you grow out your hair for like, I don't know, like eight months or something, no or like a year, so I and then it. you just push it back, and you're done. He you did it. A fire met a pass. Easy? Yeah, easy. Anybody. If I could do it, anybody could do it. Unless you're bald. If you're bald, you can't do it. What do you do with shitty non-straight hair? Just curl it. You wanna play Slave for me? Thanks. My hair is spiky. Your hair is spiky because it's short. Once it gets longer, gravity does its job and pulls it down. Oh, yay, we win. Clap. How do you know you won't go bald? I probably will go bald. There's a pretty decent chance. Haha! <laughs> no. Oh. Shit. So my guess is his last two cards are unique Cairo, which is why we played the uh, Yorvith early. Also, there's a chance he plays like Blue Dream or Horn, so we want to play it early when they have three cards. And th th there's no rush on these cards, so. Yeah, that's pretty good. 
it's not gonna win you the game, but it's pretty good. I could have heard it, it doesn't really matter. Erden was better. It doesn't matter, because now Horn goes off and we get the boost, but we're just going to Erden his uh, buff. I mean, I literally don't even need it. We are consistently winning with one card in hand with this deck. It's pretty funny. I respect nothing human. Wasn't the best play to earn in your row and scorch for five? I considered it, but I didn't do the math. I didn't know if it was enough. It might have been. Jeez, these are not going to be of any use. I don't know. Somebody can go back and look at it and tell me. You might be right. I, I have no idea. I was kind of just thrown off by the snipe. You see the Isbell bug? She takes the card to you but not to your opponent. I've never seen that now. I never miss. Every 60 seconds in Africa, a minute passes together. We can stop this. Please spread the word. Do your part, chat. Spread the word. Swords I smile at. Weapons laugh to scorn. Let us sing the song of steel! I'm gonna go ham. Because crushings are pretty underwhelming later on against this matchup. I could play Serpent Trap for BDM, but it's not worth it. 90% of the time it's just playing it for cool. This deck sucks? Okay, Apollo. Oh, it's so big.
I need to guarantee that it goes on back. I don't have a choice. You fight well. Our daughters are faring far better than you. Looking for Erden. Oh, dude, emoting plus traps equals opponent bamboozled. That's great. It works every time. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, we need these two cards. If we don't draw pit. Within the next four cards, I think we have to mulligan you with. Oh okay, do we mulligan Serpent Trap? Do we think he plays Nagfly? He's thin to zero. No, I don't. I don't think he does. He eat. I mean, okay, thin to six. I. I no, I, I. No, 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 no. Archer's actually really important for Scorch. I would have loved Erden, obviously. Erden would have been pretty nice, but this is good too. Oh, we play Ethne! Oh, we can line shit up with Ethne too. Oh, that's so good! You should not have come here. Okay. Oh, no woodland spirit for you, buddy. No, no, no. Oh, free unit for pumpkin? Oh, you shouldn't have. For you! 